Hi, my name's Annie. I'm a driving instructor and I'm a driving instructor trainer and I help people to pass theory tests. I'm a theory test expert and I thought I'd come on here to do a live mock test this morning. So why don't you join in um, and let me know how many you get right in the comments at the end and more importantly, keep a note of the ones that you get wrong. Let me tell you who I am. So my name is Annie. I'm a theory test expert and I've created this theory test course. This course has got things like worksheets, video tutorials, it's got fact lists, all stuff to help you learn before you start looking at questions. And then it's got all of the official DVSA practice questions, um, mini mock tests, full mock tests. It has case studies, anxiety techniques, and other techniques to help you pass your theory and your hazard perception test. And you're guaranteed to have the most updated questions because they have been provided to me by the DVSA. So as soon as, the, as soon as the theory test is changed, then I will change my course so that you know that you're practicing the right thing. So make a note of any questions that you get right. Let me know how many you get right at the end of this. And then write down the ones that you get wrong as well. So the question number one, when are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? Is it when you've stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic, when traveling during darkness without headlights, when parked on double yellow lines to visit a shop, or when traveling slowly because you're lost? When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? Let me give you a few seconds to answer that question. Okay, and the answer there, you're allowed to use hazard warning lights when stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. So you got that one right and you got your theory today, so that's a really, really good start, well done. Um, so question number two, what does this curved arrow road marking mean? Do you know the answer? Does it mean heavy vehicles should take the next road on the left to avoid a weight limit? The road ahead bends to the left. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left or the road ahead has a camber to the left. Let me give you a few seconds to answer that question. So don't forget to Put your answers in the comments or make a note of them, make a note of how many you get right and then write down the ones you get wrong. That's what's more important, isn't it? Knowing which ones you've got wrong. And the answer there is overtaking traffic should move back to the left. Did you get that one right? How did you do? Let's have a look at another question. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Is it one second, two seconds, three seconds or four seconds? So pop your answers in the comments or make a note of your, of your answers and let's see if you can get, get this one right. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Okay, let me go through the answer with you. A couple of you are right, a couple of you aren't right, but don't worry, I will tell you what the answer is now. If you're on a dry road, it's two seconds. On a wet road, it's four seconds. So the answer is D, four seconds. Let me just go through that again. On a dry road, you should leave two seconds between you and the car in front. On a wet road, that's doubled to four seconds. And when it's icy, that's 10 times the gap, and 10 times the gap is 20 seconds. So if you got it wrong, don't worry about it. Now you know the right answer. Question, next question. Don't know what one we're up to. What information is found on a vehicle registration document? Is it the registered keeper, the type of insurance cover, the service history details or the date of the MOT. 
It's the answer A, B, C or D. Why not get rid, in your head, in your mind, get rid of the answers that are absolutely rubbish and then it will make it so much easier to get this one correct. Leave you another 10 seconds to have a think about the answer. Okay, and the answer there, what information can be found on a vehicle registration document and it's the registered keeper of the vehicle. Remember, it's not the owner of the vehicle, the owner is the person who pays for it. The registered keeper is the person who keeps the vehicle, who uses the vehicle and their name and details are on the vehicle registration document. So well done if you got that one right. If you didn't, don't worry about it, now you know. So this question here is which road user has caused a hazard? Is it the car parked A, the pedestrian waiting to cross arrowed B, the moving car arrowed C or the car turning arrowed D? And there's a picture bigger for you to have a look at. Which road user has caused a hazard? Is it the car that's parked, the pedestrian walking, the car overtaking or the car turning? I'll give you another five seconds to pop your answers in or to have a think about what your answer is. And the answer here is A, the car parked is on zigzag lines. You should not park on zigzag lines. Lots and lots of paint on the road means more danger, more restrictions, and you shouldn't be parking there because drivers won't be able to see who's crossing the road. People who are crossing the road won't be able to see up and down the road very easily. Um, you should not park on zigzag lines. So the car parked A is um, the car that's causing the hazard, the thing that's causing the hazard. Next question, you're joining a motorway from a slip road. How should you deal with traffic already on the motorway? Should you carry along, on along the hard shoulder until you see a safe gap? Should you stop at the end of the slip road and look for a safe gap? Should you use the slip road to accelerate until you're moving much faster than the, tr than the motorway traffic? Or should you match your speed to the traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe gap? So there's some words in those answers that will really, really help you with the right answer because driving is all about being safe, isn't it? Keeping yourself safe, keeping other people safe. So which of those is the right answer? Okay, and I'll reveal the answer now. And the answer is match your speed. It's D, match your speed to the traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe gap. Don't worry if you thought it was A, carry on along the hard shoulder until you see a safe gap. That just proves you need to read the whole of the answers before you um, before you make your decision because um, D says match your speed to the traffic in the left hand lane and filter into a safe gap so that is the safest option of those four does that make sense okay next question you're about to overtake a slow moving motorcyclist which sign would make you take special care which of these four signs would make you take special care as you're, um, as you're overtaking a motorcyclist? Is it A, B, C or D? I'll leave you another 15 seconds or so to pop your answers in and have a really good think about what the answer might be. Some great answers coming in. If you get it right, that's fantastic. If you don't, don't worry about it because I'll help you. Okay, so the answer there is A. 
A is a triangle sign. And remember, triangle shaped signs are warning signs. That's my way of helping you to remember. If you make a triangle with your hands and open the triangle out, you can see the shape of a W for warning. So A is a warning sign. Don't worry. Uh, a is a warning sign and um, it's warning you of side winds. There's a flag there that's saying it could be quite windy. And if you're overtaking a motorcyclist, that wind could hit that motorcyclist and affect the riding, couldn't it? Um, so, um, so the answer there is A. How are you getting on? Okay, next question. Which shape are, are traffic signs giving orders? What shape are traffic signs giving orders? Do you know the answer? If you can know this one, they can, you can answer lots and lots of theory test questions if you know the shapes of the signs. I cover them all in my course. Um, I make sure it's all really, really clear if you go through my course, which is there. If you want to have a look at it, testbuddy.app um, forward slash live. You can have a look at my course. You can also go to that link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I'll reveal the answer in another couple of seconds. Some good answers coming in, but don't worry if you're getting it wrong. So the signs giving orders are circular Sorry, signs. I couldn't hear what you said. So circular signs give orders. You can easily remember that if you make a circle shape with your hands, look at your hands and you can see the shape of an O for order. Circle signs are orders. Okay, so if you got it right, that's great. If you got it wrong, maybe you should make that circle with your hands, look at the circle, see the shape of an O and tell yourself circle signs are orders. So, next question. What, which type of sign tells you what you must not do. Do you know the answer? One of these um, is telling you what you must not do. So pop your answers into the comments. I'll leave it another five, ten seconds, pop some more answers in, and then I will let you know what the answer to this question is. Okay, so the answer is A. So remember I said circle signs are orders. You can easily remember that if you make a circle with your hands, look at your hands, and you can see you've got the shape of, shape of an O for order. Red circles tell you what you must not do. If you think of red for danger, red for stop, red, don't do it. Blue circle signs tell you what you must do. So if you say out loud, blue must do, that will help you to remember that circle, blue circle signs are telling you what you must do. If you think of red for stop and red for danger, that will help you to remember that red signs are telling you what you must not do. I'll give you an example, shall I? Let's find a red circle sign, something that's telling you what you must not do. Okay, this one here, you must not drive any faster than 40 miles per hour. Red circles are telling you what you must not do. Um, and this one here, it's a red circle with a picture of motor vehicles inside. Motor vehicles cannot go down this road. It's telling you what you must not do. I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the next question. What's the meaning of this sign? Does it mean local speed limit applies? Does it mean no waiting on the carriageway? Does it mean national speed limit applies or no entry for vehicles? What does that sign mean? A, B, C or D? So I'll give you another 15 seconds to pop your answer in. Some great answers coming in. Don't worry if you don't know. Don't worry if you're not sure about the answer because I'll help you with it. 
Okay, and the right answer here, this sign means national speed limit applies. If you see that sign, you won't see a sign that's giving you a speed limit, a red circle sign with a speed limit in it. You'll see that sign and that means you're allowed to go the fastest for the type of road that you're on. If you're on a single carriageway road, you're allowed to drive up to 60 miles per hour. If you're on a dual carriageway road, you're allowed to drive up to 70 miles per hour. So that sign means the fastest you're allowed for the type of road that you're on, which is national speed limit. How are you getting on? So next question, how much can stopping distances increase in icy conditions? Is it two times, three times, five times or ten times? I'll leave you another couple of uh, few seconds to put some answers in the comments um, or just keep your answers in your head if that's what you prefer. But just make sure you make a note of what you get right, but more importantly, make a note of what you get wrong and then don't worry about it because I can help you. OK, and the correct answer here is how much can stopping distance is increase in icy conditions? And the answer is 10 times. I've already been through this, but let me go through it again for you. Um, in normal dry conditions, when the roads are just dry, you should leave a two second gap. When the roads are wet, you should double it to four seconds. When the roads are icy, it's 10 times the gap. 10 times the gap would be 20 seconds. So 10 times is the right answer there. So well done if you got it right. If you don't, now you know the answer. Next question. When are you not allowed to sound your vehicle's horn? Is it between 10, a, 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. in a built-up area? Is it at any time in a built-up area? Between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area? Or between 11.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. on any road? Do you know what the right answer is here? Keep putting your answers in. I'll reveal the answer in another couple of seconds. OK, so the answer here, when are you not allowed to sound your vehicle's horn, is between 11.30pm and 7am in a built-up area. So it's really important here, if you're not getting this one right, just think, what do you do at 11.30? What I think to myself is it's nearly midnight, so almost midnight. And then 7 a.m., that could be the time I set my alarm when I'm doing a, a live in the morning. So have a think, what are you doing at 11.30 and at 7 a.m.? And that will really help you to remember those times of day. It could be the time you set your alarm, it could be the time you get to work, it could be the time that your mum leaves for work, um, et cetera, et cetera. But what's happening at those times of day? And that will really, really help you to remember the times. Okay, next question. What restrictions apply if you're towing a trailer on a three-lane motorway? You mustn't exceed 50 miles per hour. You mustn't overtake. You must have a stabiliser fitted. You mustn't use the right-hand lane. Do you know what the answer is to that question? Have a think about it. Pop it in the comments if you want to. So we've got some C's and some D's coming in.
Okay, so you're on a motorway, you're towing a trailer, um, what restrictions apply? And the restriction is you mustn't use the right hand lane. If you're, um, if you're towing a trailer, you're towing a caravan, um, you're not allowed to use the right hand lane on a three lane motorway. Um, some people said you mustn't exceed 50 miles per hour. Uh, the speed limit on a motorway is 70 miles per hour. But if you're towing, it's 10 miles per hour less. OK, so just remember that it's 10 miles per hour less. Um, some people said you must have a stabiliser fitted. A stabiliser is good. A stabiliser helps. A stabiliser is advised, but you don't have to have one fitted. OK, but you can't use the right hand lane. Does that make sense? I see some likes flying up the screen. Thank you. OK, next question. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Which sign means there may be people walking along the road? This is where knowing and understanding the shapes of signs will really, really help you because they're warning you, aren't they? It's going to be a warning sign. So what shape is a warning sign? Think about that. So I'll give you another 10 seconds or so to pop your answers in or to have a think about the answer and maybe note it down on a bit of paper or something. Awesome. OK, so the sign that means there may be people walking along the road is D. It's a warning sign and it's got two people in it. It's got what looks like to be an adult and a child walking along the road. Some people might think it's C. This is a crossing. Look at the dashed lines. That's warning you of a crossing. And these two signs are orders. The first one is an order. It's red. Don't do it. You can't use this road. So pedestrians aren't allowed on this road. The second one is a circle. It's an order, but it's a blue circle. It's telling you what you must do. And it's saying that cyclists and pedestrians must share this. OK, this side for cyclists and this side for the pedestrians walking. Does that make sense? OK, so another question for you. Which sign means no motor vehicles allowed? Which sign means no motor vehicles allowed? So they're all red circles. So they're all saying, don't do it. You can't use this road. But which one is it that's telling you that no motor vehicles are allowed? Some great answers coming in. I'll leave it another five seconds for you to have a think about it. You don't need to rush theory test questions and answers. When in your test, you have plenty of time to do the uh, to do the question. Read the question twice. Go through all the answers. Get rid of the rubbish answers, and then think which is the correct answer here. And the correct answer is B. B is no motor vehicles allowed. A is saying no overtaking. It's got a black car and a red car. And that means no overtaking. B has got pictures of motor vehicles inside it. So that means no motor vehicles allowed. C has got a picture of just a car inside. So it's no cars. And... Um, D is pedestrian, saying no pedestrians. Chloe Harris, that's awesome. Congratulations. Fantastic news. OK, so I think we've done 15 questions there. How many did you get right? Did you get most of them right? Have a, make a note of the ones that you got wrong. Did you get all of them right? I know you've not all been with me the whole time, but how many have you got right since you've been watching me? Five out of five, five. Uh, 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 five out of ten how many of you got right and any that you got wrong don't worry about it because you can learn from it 
So let me tell you who I am and then I'm going to go and I'll let you know when I'm going to be live again helping you with more theory. So my name is Annie um, I'm, I'm Annie, and I'm here making theory easy for you and this is just a revision session to help you get motivated. Um, I'm an ADI, approved driving instructor and I'm an audit registered instructor trainer. That means I train people to become driving instructors and I'm a theory test expert. I became a theory test expert because I was getting so many messages messages for people that are struggling with their theory test and I thought that I can help I know that I can help you guys like I say this isn't a lesson this is a revision session to motivate you to do some studying and I'll be doing lots of them over the next few weeks so keep watching me keep following me on TikTok on Instagram on Facebook on YouTube if you go to this link here uh, testbuddy.app forward slash live then you can subscribe to my youtube channel you can have a look at my theory test course um, the pass rate is 47 percent it's a sad face there i don't like that i don't like that that's way too low for me that's way too low for you too many people failing not really understanding what they need to do and what they need to know um, so I created theory test course like I say if you go to this link here above my head you'll be able to see theory test course um, and it's got everything in it that you need it's got things like worksheets that you can fill in if you want to it's got lots of video tutorials about 90 of them it's got lists of all the facts that you need you can listen to those facts as you're going about your uh, your daily business um, each of the lists is only a couple of minutes long so you can keep on listening to those and what happens is the information just goes into your unconscious mind which is fantastic and then it's got all of the official practice questions um, for every topic and it's got a mock test for every topic and it's got four mock tests and case studies and then stuff like anxiety techniques how to answer question techniques um uh has a perception techniques all that kind of stuff uh Waleed, i don't know what time i came live i was a little bit late because my computer's broken which is why i reverted to my ipad as you can see and that's what we some time to set up so i don't know what time i came on but i will be coming on regularly follow me on tiktok instagram facebook or, or youtube and you'll see these uh, lives very regularly because i want to help you i want to change this that's my goal is to change this pass rate and I know my course is already doing that. Every single person that goes through the whole course passes their theory test. Um, it's got the most updated questions. How do I know? Because the DVSA give them to me. They, they provide me with them because they've had to look at my courses and they're really, really happy. Um, with, with what I provide. Jessica, good luck for a few hours time. Good luck. Um, like I say, don't forget to follow me on TikTok. I'll be live um, on TikTok tonight at 6 till 8 p.m. Go to another revision session with you. And I'll be live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. on TikTok going through a lesson with you. And I'll be teaching you stuff like, what shall I cover tomorrow? I'll, I'll do my traffic light technique tomorrow to teach you the colors of the motorway studs. And all of those these lessons will go onto my YouTube channel as well. So if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, go to here, testbuddy.app forward slash live. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can sign up for my course. My course is $34.99, which is just the price of one single one hour driving lesson and will guarantee you 100% test ready. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've covered 15 theory test questions. Um, I've had quite a few people following me, following me, so I will do more of them. Now I know that it's what you want. Um, I will be doing more of them. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Anyone who's got the test in an hour, in a few hours or whatever, Good luck with that and I'd love to hear how you get on. Thanks for joining me. Bye.